Good day again, Grade 12s. Today we're looking at urban structure and patterns. So obviously uh, different cities have got different shapes and different patterns, and even the street patterns in the cities differ. There are three main street patterns that we're going to be having a looking look at um, in this lesson. Um, but we need to take into consideration things like the topography of the area and major economic activities like mining close to the city. This would have um, an effect on the shape and main transport routes. The city um, tends to expand out along main transport um, routes. Can you identify these cities here from these iconic structures? Um, let's have a look at the first one. That is the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Next up, we have got the um, Opera House, Sydney in Australia. Then we have got here, we've got the Taj Mahal. That's in India in a city called Alvara. Then this building here is the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. This one, most definitely New York City with the Statue of Liberty. And at the bottom here we get local. This, um, at the bottom here we've got Orlando Towers in Soweto. This skyline is definitely Johannesburg, the city centre of Johannesburg, because we can see the television tower. I think it, um, it's called the Brixton, um, Brixton Tower. The last one down here, can you recognise that? It's the entrance to a city we know and love. So let's have a look at these street patterns. Um, most cities have actually got a combination of these street patterns. They've sort of got, in the older areas, uh, tend more towards the grid pattern, and more um, modern areas are more uh, irregular. Let's have a look at them. So the radial street pattern is where the roads all sort of um, go in towards a central monument or place like a church or town square. Um, Advantages, so it's an easy flow of traffic, but disadvantage, now it says traffic jam, so I'm not really sure of that, but um, so space is wasted, space is wasted on this, on this pattern. It would be a disadvantage, obviously. Planned irregular, these next two go together, they're, they're both irregular, but this one now is the planned irregular, and we call it that because you can definitely see that there is a pattern visible. Um, the advantages here are improved flow of traffic, it's an interesting layout, and it takes into consideration the nature of the topography. If you've got very steep slopes, um, it's better to have um, roads going on the contour lines rather than, than straight up and straight down. Disadvantages are that it is really easy to get, to get lost. This next one you can see is the unplanned irregular street pattern. There is absolutely no pattern at all. Um, the only advantage would be that it's one of a kind. But it does definitely lead to traffic congestion. It's very easy to get, to get lost. Then the last one is um, the most common one that's found in, in the centre of cities, in, in CBDs. In our own town in Polokwane, our CBD definitely also looks like this. So um, the roads intersect at right angles, making these um, rectangular blocks. The advantages are um, it's really easy to find your way around. Land is easily divided up. Um, there's very little wastage of space and there's shorter distance of, of travel. Disadvantages um, are mostly related to the fact that these roads cross, cross so many others, the intersections. So um, it slows the traffic down. There are a lot of um, accidents at intersections. What can be done to, to um, fix this problem are traffic lights, what we call in South Africa robots. But these um, ideally should be synchronized. What, what I mean when I say synchronized is that on the main roads as you're driving through, if you were to stick to the speed limit, then the traffic lights are synchronized so that you would then get green lights going all the way through. Another uh, solution to the problem is to make some of the, some of the streets into one-way streets. The urban profile, this is another um, uh, item that we, we look at. 
it's the vertical shape of the of the settlement. It's as if you took a cross section right through through the middle of town. So what we see here most often is that in the centre of town, in the CBD region, you have the highest buildings, the tallest buildings, and sort of around the CBD you have. Um, low income housing, informal settlements perhaps there. You'll see here we talk about the transition zone. We're going to look at land use zones in the next lesson. We will speak about that. Further out you have um, suburban shopping centers, office parks, even further out there you would have industrial industrial regions and sort of on the outskirts of town, not too far away, but just on the outskirts, you would have high income residential and then even further out from that would be the rural urban fringe. We're going to look at a couple of these in tomorrow's lesson. Also for tomorrow's lesson there are two um, terms that you need to need to look at. The one is centripetal forces, the other centrifugal. Centripetal forces are factors that keep functions in the city. Centrifugal are, are forces or factors that um, cause functions to move out of the city centre. We're going to have a look at those in more detail tomorrow. Thank you.